In this video, I want to look at nesting using if-else statements. And in order to do that, I've created a program that's going to be about a party. It's going to ask the user to enter in their age, and if they're above the age of 13, they can go to the party. Otherwise, they can't go. So we would start this by writing our if statement. It's going to say if age is greater than or equal to 14, it's going to say you can go to the party. And an else statement, which says if the statement above is not true, you can't go to the party. So if I was to enter in 13, it would not fit the requirement of age being greater than or equal to 14, so therefore it would say you cannot go to the party. But if I were to enter in 14, which is greater than or equal to 14, the result would be you can go to the party. Now this is not nesting, but we're building to that. Let's say if you can go to the party, I'm going to add another decision. And that decision is, if you're below 17, you have to come home by 10, or your curfew is set at 10. And if you're above 16, your curfew is set at midnight for the party. So let's see how we would do this in code. Remember, nesting is just simply putting one control structure, like if-else statements, inside another control structure, another if-else statement. Let's see what would happen if we use the same input as in the last slide. So if the age is 13, that would not meet the condition, it would be false, and therefore go to the else statement. The else statement would simply say, you cannot go to the party. So the output would be, you cannot go to the party. Let's start it up again with different input and try 14. Is 14 greater than or equal to 14? Well, yes, it is. And therefore, it would be true. And then it would go into the if statement, print out, you can go to the party. Then we're going to start the second part and say, if your age is greater than or equal to 17, you can stay out to midnight. Well, that's false, so therefore it goes to the else statement, and it's going to print out, you can only stay until 10 p.m. Now, let's reset it and see what happens if we do a different input. What if we tried 18? Well, 18 is greater than or equal to 14, so that would be true. It would print, you can go to the party. And then it would check, is 18 greater than or equal to 17? Well, yes, it is. So because that condition is true, it would print, you can stay until midnight. So we've seen how we can take one if-else statement and nest it inside another if-else statement. Now nesting is not limited just to an if statement inside another if statement or an if-else statement inside of an if-else statement. You can also have an if-else statement with just a simple if statement inside of it. And that's what we're going to do inside of this program. It's going to require a little bit of setup. Let's say that you were going through your cookbook and you're trying to determine whether you like certain recipes or not. And you're going to score each one as you eat it. So when you eat it, you're going to enter in a tasty score. And if it's below 10, it's going to be bad. If it's above 9, it's going to be good. And if it's above 14, it's going to be not only good, but excellent. And a numeric score is going to be associated with bad, good, and excellent. So a zero for bad, one for good, and a two for excellent. So let's see how we would write this. So as you can see, I've nested an if statement inside of my if else statement. And let's see how this would run with some different input. So first of all, we're going to start with the number five. If I start with the number five, five is not greater than or equal to 10. So therefore it would be false and go to the else statement then the else statement would change tasty points from 1 to 0. And then in the next step, we would want to print out tasty points. And we would say tasty points equals, it should say, 0. But interestingly enough, this is going to say 1. And you say, well, why is that happening? And the answer is in how the if statement is being associated. You might be able to tell by looking at this that there's some ambiguity here. There's a question as to which statement that else belongs. Because of the indention, it sure looks like it belongs to the top if statement. But that's not how the compiler is reading it. It's reading it as if it is tied to the inner if statement. So when we run the program, what's really happening is if score is greater than or equal to 10. Well, it's not because score is 5. We know this to be false. And then it doesn't go to the inner if because the condition is false. And because that else is associated with the inner if, it won't run that either. So therefore, it skips over everything and goes down to printing it out. Because tasty points is assigned to 1 right here, that's why we get tasty points being 1. Now, how could we fix this? 
we could use braces. And while braces are optional, they sure do make a program easier to read. And they can help us from running into this problem of a dangling or hanging else. This program, it is unambiguous which if the else is associated with. So if we used five as our input, it would come here again. That would still be false. And then it would definitely go to that else statement because we can see from the braces that have been added that the else statement is associated with that if statement above. It would change tasty points to zero and then it would print out tasty points is zero. If you want to be clear when nesting if else statements, you can't do it with indention. Indention doesn't mean anything to the compiler. You must do it with braces. The idea of nesting is putting one control structure inside another control structure like an if-else statement inside of another if or if-else statement. Especially with nesting if-else statements, it is important to use braces. We saw how that else statement sure did look like it was associated with the outer if, when in fact it was associated with the inner if. And if we had used braces, it would have been unambiguous and clear to both yourself and other programmers. And lastly, no extra syntax is required when nesting statements. You're simply using the same words, just putting one inside of the other. Nesting statements can be a powerful tool when choosing how a program is going to run and how it's going to make its decisions. Understanding how it works and the importance of braces will go a long way into writing better code for you and other programmers. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.